So, hello everybody. I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing. Now, I am not a filmmaker. I am by no means professional or anything. And I sure as heck am not going to sit here and make an hour-long video of me peeling every little scrap of skin and dicing and boiling and cooking and yakking your ear off for no reason. Just a disclaimer and let you guys know. <laughs> Alright, this is not a cooking video. This is not a how-to video. This is me cooking this ground nut in particular. And just telling you pretty much how it tastes and what I think of it. Basically to give you an idea of what the heck a ground nut actually tastes like. You know, Apios Americana. A delicious, because I've eaten them. I eat them all the time. A really delicious native crop that is very easy to grow. And these are improved varieties. And I'm not 100% sure what this variety was right here. It is either a Sarah, a Simon, or a Samantha. Or one of my Joannas. I'm not 100%. I keep them in the fridge and when I use them, I use them. And anyway, you know... To give you the gist of it, I'm basically going to take this root right here, which is not very big. It's actually the size of probably your standard russet potato. And I actually cut the growing ends off of it because just like potatoes, ground nuts grow eyes and they grow from those eyes. And it is planting time and I cut those eyes off and they are planted out to give me more ground nuts, <laughs> you know? just in case you didn't get that. So, you know, those were cut off. And there's a nice little chunk there. And I'm not cooking an entire meal of this for you. I'm just going to cook some up nice and fresh and describe to you how it tastes to me. Though I could probably do that from memory. I will do it fresh for you guys. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, ground nuts, I've talked about them before. Uh, I just mentioned something about them. You know... They like to grow wild in very wet places or even swampy kind of places. They can handle very wet, muddy soils. But in cultivation, they do perfectly fine, if not better, in just standard soil. That's nice and rich and kept moist and really well mulched. They don't need to be growing in mucky, wet soils, even though in the wild... That's the only place you find them is in really damp, wet areas, even soggy areas, which is odd. But go figure, plants, you know, uh, even wild types in cultivation do very well in standard good rich soil compost mixes, you know. And the improved varieties are just the same. The only difference between wild ground nuts and the improved varieties, which there aren't many and they're extremely rare... They're extremely rare, and I'd hazard that they basically almost went extinct just because people stopped working with them. They are from LSU, you know, the uh, university, whatever, they're out of Louisiana when they were worked with, uh, what, a Dr. Blockman or whatever, and I don't know, it stopped funding, who knows, and very rare, very, very rare. It took me literal decades to track down named varieties and from collectors and everything it, it took me a long time and actually I got some that weren't even in the US but anyway and uh, here they are so I'm going to uh, cut this up and uh, do things to it <laughs> And uh, we'll, we'll go from there, right? <laughs> Improved ground nuts, guys. Apios Americana. This is an LSU improved variety. Though I have myself grown seeds of improved varieties. And I've even made hybrids between America, Americana Princiana, Princiana and um, Apios Americana. Excuse me, I got that name messed up. Apios Princiana and Apios Americana. I have made hybrids and am currently selecting those out for 
nice large clumping type tubers yeah pretty awesome stuff but uh yeah let me cut this up and i'll be right back and we will go from there the magic of filming ta-da there you go guys i simply use that there knife to peel that there skin off of those there chunks of ground nut tuber and i'm going to commence putting them in this here pot right see that see right there okay in the pot see and um the one thing about these they do have a latex a natural latex which a lot of plants actually do lettuce uh figs you know it's, it's natural it's a little sticky but it's not bad and honestly the way you get around that ground nut is is you do just what i did with this one here cut the ends off and put it in the fridge and the sap will actually leak out through the cut ends and form little you know like a node sheen on the cut end and then you just slice that little thin part off and toss it in your compost feed it to your pigs whatever and the latex in the rest of the ground night ground night crown nut is um very 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 much reduced by i'd say 95 percent or more if you cut them completely fresh they're leaking sap everywhere you know like a fig an unripe fig so you just cut the butt off stick it in your fridge and I actually prepare all my ground nuts that way I'll cut the butt off and keep them in the fridge until I'm ready to cook them. That way they're already de-sapped and, or don't. It doesn't really matter. It's not that bad. Cut it up on a plate. It washes right off your knives and everything. It's not horrible. And it's edible 100%. You can't taste it or anything. So no worries there. But yeah, just a little trick that I do with ground nuts. So anyway, yeah, there you go. Cut up, peeled. You can use a knife or potato peeler, whatever especially on the improved varieties here and they tend to be much more uniform and yeah you know this is because it's such a big tuber was probably simon simon is a very large variety and then uh i think it's sarah or samantha gosh i'm not looking at my descriptions of them but <laughs> um one i think it's sarah gets real you know, it's an improved variety, but the tubers are not full, giant, russet potato size like Simon. And it has a very thin skin that you can just boil it whole and eat them like new potatoes. And in fact, you can actually eat the skin on these just like potatoes. You do not have to peel your ground nuts, guys. Um, the skin's not that bad. Just get a brush and scrub it like you would a potato and either boil it whole or fry them into chips, whatever. You don't have to peel it. So, yeah. Let me add some water to that and cook it. And then, hmm, I'm gonna, I was gonna just do plain salted water and just tell you guys what it tastes like, but why, why am I gonna torture this? I'm gonna slather this bitch in butter. So yeah, hang on a moment. Let me get these cooking. More magic of filming, guys. <laughs> it's actually been like 30 minutes. Um, I don't entirely remember exactly where I left off or what I said. So, hello. And um, here is uh, the cooked ground nut, guys. I think I did tell you I was going to slather it in butter. And I did. <laughs> you see, I grow my own food. I don't raise my own butter, you know. But... Just because you grow your own food does not mean you cannot slather it all up in butter and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all delicious manner of things, <laughs> you know? Guys, I grow tons of my own potatoes, but that doesn't mean I don't put so much freaking mayonnaise. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> anyway, ground nuts, guys. You know, nobody knows what they taste.